Hi, I'm KJH the filmmaker slash artist, and welcome to at the art studios. Today at the studios, I'm going to showcase this artwork called 31 Pictures of Monsters. This artwork is a mixed media piece, and it's in the form of an art book. Its type is the accordion book for you have seen that the pages are like an accordion style of art. How it was made is that I created the book cover with panel canvas, painted the cover with acrylic and a palette knife. I even created the title and all out of sharpie markers and mixed media paper. Then I gloss it with a few coats of Mod Podge to make it look shiny. The pages are made out of mixed media papers and on them I use sharpie markers for outlines, watercolor paint for the background, ink tents and watercolor pencils for coloring, and white ink pens for highlights. How I put it all in one book is that I use these orange construction papers to place them or rather glue them on each edge. About this artwork, it was part of my Inktober challenge I did for myself, so I challenged myself to create 31 pictures of monsters for 31 days. Well, it's quite the challenge. What I did is that I've created a list of 31 monsters to help me draw, draw these sketch ideas on my iPad, and turn it into an artwork. Also note that this artwork was completed on October 31st, 2021, and I'll let you take it away KJH. Okay. So here's the book of 31 pieces of monsters, so I'm going to show you the image here. So this here, this is the jack o lantern over here, so you kind of see this is jack o lantern here, it's almost kind of sinister, and then there's also another character I created. This one's called the Green Witch, I made it for day two or something like that, or is it Toba John or something like that. And you kind of see this Green Witch, which looks kind of old, or re looks kind of old. And she's carrying a broomstick because you can see that little green witch and her skin's kind of green. And then we have like evil ghosts. This is a male ghost, so you kind of see this evil ghost looks kind of sinister. Like he's up to no good or something like that. Or maybe he's trying to hide someone. So you kind of see that the ghost gender is male and male, and you kind of see the background is purple or something like that. I'm not sure how. And then you have like this male vampire character who also looks sinister or something like that. Even though all these monsters are kind of sinister other than this book so you kind of get the point and then we have the Frankenstein monster but the matter of fact I was trying to make this Frankenstein monster more as if he was like kind of like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein for that matter but I did have some kind of stitches on his you know, on his face and also on his neck or something like that and you guys see he doesn't look happy so he looks kind of angry as well as being sinister or something like that so this Frankenstein muscles is a combination between Mary Shelley's Frankenstein and, of course, the 1930s version of the movie Frankenstein, for that matter. And then we have the male werewolf. As a matter of fact, I try to draw like furries or something like that. So this is pretty much like the first time I draw like a furry character or something like that. And you kind of see this werewolf figure just looks kind of sinister and also kind of... And you kind of see that his clothes were torn to shred because he was human. And based on his transformation, I decided to make it look like he just... He had some kind of tears on his clothing to make it look like he was shaking himself to a werewolf or something like that. And that's how it's going. And then we have the female vampire, unlike the male vampire does. So this female vampire figure, she's all sinister and she also wears like this red clothing on and all. And it looks like she was looking at her one of her victims that she probably might drink blood out of or something like that. Even though I use red and all and all these antinas, so pretty much the color of red is like the color of evil, because I always use red as the color of evil. And then, and then we have the dark wizard or dark sorcerer or something like that. So he's also many sinister or something like that. So like this dark wizard is up to no good or something like that. And then we have, and then we have the dragon here. So pretty much the dragon does this kind of sinister. So even though, even though in some parts I might portray dragons if they were monsters or something like that, but that depends. And then we have. The Bride of Frankenstein, so you kind of see that this Bride of Frankenstein had stitches all over, not on her face or her neck or something like that. She had stitches all over her dress or something like that to give her this Frankenstein look or something like that. And you kind of see she doesn't look that happy, but she looks kind of angry, you know. And then we have the female werewolf, so this is another time I create a furry character, but you kind of see this female werewolf had her transformation going around here. Even though we already knew that werewolves start as human, and then they just turn to wolf in the middle of the night, not, not especially when they get exposed to a full moon or something like that. And you kind of get the point on how she transforms into a werewolf or something like that. You kind of get the point. Then we have like this 
blob monster here. So this blob monster looks kind of ang angrily sinister, and you kind of see that this guy got away with adding some kind of jewels by by using all these white ink pencil or something like that. So you kind of kind of get the point with this blob monster that looks like he's drawing or something like that. So. So even though it looks angry sinister, but not worried at the same time, even though this night design makes this thing only his drawer or something like that. And then we have the Cyclops. So pretty much you're gonna see the Cyclops looks kind of angry or something like that. Despite the fact I got away with just the one-eyed monster I first seen that he created. I first seen that he created, even though Cyclops can't be monsters, but no, all Cyclops are monsters anyway, but you kinda get the point on how I was going with anyhow. And then we have the giant snake monster. So you kind of see this giant snake monster is terrorizing a building or something like that, or terrorizing a city. Like he's probably, and I why I'm using this giant snake monster is if he was like kaiju size or something like that. But as a matter of fact, I tend to get away with the with an animal snake, even though the snake has been a representation of evil self, especially through my well, the Lettuce community for all that matter, because because our ancestors was tricked by the snake this whole time. Even though the snake thing must have tricked us all into thinking, you know. So we, so in some case, we probably must have did create snake characters, and we wanted to portray the snake characters if it wasn't, as if it was a demon monster or something like that, because it tricked us into thinking, leads us into like this whole entire temptational stress disorder happen out of nowhere. And then we have like the evil ghost. So this is a female evil ghost. So you can kind of see this female evil ghost is kind of sinister or something like that. Even though, I'm not going to do the same thing I did with a male ghost or something like that. So this female ghost pretty much is all in purple or something like that. And she also looks kind of way more sinister than she was in, with this male ghost or something like that. And then we have the lizard monster. So pretty much the lizard monster also looks sinister. And you kind of see the lizard monster had his tongue sticking out. And it's like he was trying to eat somebody. Even the monsters can't eat people anyhow. So what? I'm just going to... Going to get away with portraying monsters if they were just trying to eat us or something like that. Even though they're not people, but they're monsters. Who knows? And then, and then we have the giant frog monster. So pretty much the giant frog monster. So instead of just adding in a building, I design or city. I add in like a suburb there or housing all, all over. So you kind of see that this giant frog monster it looks kind of sinister. He drools, and he's also looking this look that doesn't look lizard-like, but it's just. Frog like or something like that, and he looks like he's trying to eat somebody or something like that. Even though this thing is a giant monster, but you kind of get the point of how it was going with. And then you have the Triclops. Well, kind of like the Cyclops, but this thing had three eyes instead of just at least one or two eyes or something like that. And this Triclops figure looks kind of sinister anyhow. So pretty much, so pretty much, I do create like Triclops characters. Well, there's been kind of one sketch about me drawing the Triclops character, except it's not necessarily a monster, but it's Likely people like us or something like that. Even though, even though I get away with monster with at least three eyes, or maybe I might get away with a thousand eyes monster or something like that. It's hard to draw monsters with a thousand eyes or something like that. Even though you had to count how many eyes, it doesn't have to be a thousand of eyes. Maybe, maybe make it look like he has a thousand of eyes or something like that. No, that's how most people create their monster characters anyhow. And then we have like the red witch. So pretty much the red witch is probably unlike the green witch. I per I create so this red witch is kind of like way more younger than the green witch was, even though this red witch is, is using some of her red magic or dark magic and all that stuff, and she kind of looks kind of sinister or something like that. Even though this red witch figure is like all about this beautiful looks and all that stuff, but sinister at the same time. You probably know how I'm going with this looks anyhow. And then we have like the cupcake monster. So pretty much I decided to get away with food like monsters. Like what if I reimagine food as if they were monsters? So I get away with something like this. And you kinda of see the cupcake monster looks kinda of angry or something like that. And it looks like he just wants to rent on on all of us for obviously eating all of our, all of his cousins who happens to be who's also kind of a cupcake and for some reason only I just got away with got away with adding in sharp teeth and the sinister looks on the cupcake monster's face or something like that. So you kind of get the point of where I was going to anyhow, even though they're just food monsters or something like that. And then there, then we have like the sea monsters. So pretty much you kind of see the sea monster looks kind of sinister or something like that, and it's like blue underwater. So I get this background like underwater effect or something like that. Is that the sea monster is literally like underwater or something like that, that are going under water, water, and I tend to get away with these torn pants or something like that. I don't think any of the shirt is torn anyway. Even though the sea monster was used underwater and all that stuff. And then we have like 
the bodybuilding monster. Okay, well you kind of get the point that I sometimes in, in some of my films I just portray monsters if they were kind of being a bodybuilder or something like that. So, you can kind of see that this bodybuilding monster looks like he's angry but he's kind of like a tough guy and he sure does looks like one of these guys who might have kind of might one day cheat in Olympic Games or something like that. And you best be hoping that this thing doesn't win in Olympic Games anyway because you probably know how he, how he managed to win this anyhow. And then we have the giant bat monster. This looks like the vampire's transformation. If he had the ability to turn transform himself into a giant bat monster or something like that. So you kinda of see that this giant bat monster is wearing pants on and he does and running and that thing does look kinda of sinister or something like that with his bat wings open up or something like that. And then we and we probably might assume that maybe this giant bat monster is is going after his victim or something like that, the way vampires would just do this anyhow. So pretty much for this giant bad monster, he looks like similar. He looks like he's kind of like similar to this bodybuilding monster, as if he just again cheats in the Olympic game or something like that. You must be hoping that he doesn't go to the Olympic or something like that, or otherwise he's gonna be cheating. You probably know how I'm going. And then next, next we have the mummy. So pretty much the mummy is is another monster character I just created. Like. We see, like we heard from ancient Egypt or something like that. Even though I did create like one of the Cajun Jewelry Show episode of, of of my character, and of course all of our friends is going on an adventure and discovering the King of the Mummy, and, and even worse, he promised I wanted to own a pyramid for all that matter. And they finally went and got away with this all, all of a sudden once. So we probably understand that maybe this mummy character could have possibly been this mummified pharaoh or something like that. Even though this mummy character doesn't look that happy, but straight up sinister or something like that, like he's really about to make you want to build a pyramid in your own backyard or something like that. And now we have the the ice cream monsters. This is another example of how you get away with another food like monster. So you kinda of see this ice cream monster is like is like hungry or something like that. Angrily hungry or something like that. Even though it's the same thing with that cupcake monster is that is these food like is this food like monster like the ice cream monsters trying to get revenge because we again eat eat his stuff and or something like that and then we just and then next he knows he just got mad and wants to eat us. Like it's our turn to eat up by them or something like that. And then we have like the black and gray witch. So pretty much the black and gray witch is way looks like she's way more old than that green witch or the way more older than the green witch and of course the red witch or something like that. So I'm guessing the red witch is kinda of like the younger one and the and the black and gray witch is kinda of like the older elves or something like that because you know since she's kinda of like wrinkled up and had messed up teeth or something like that. And you kinda of see she's cooling something that Cold or something like that, whatever she's cooking, I'm not gonna explain that, but but you kinda get the point where I'm going. You probably might suggest she's cooking some kind of potion or something like that, or maybe she's about to cook something something unusual, like for example, maybe she's trying to cook some people, right, or some children, even though even though witches in some fairy tales does eat kids in the fairy tales or something like that. Even though in some fairy tales they just get away with kids just, just defeating the witch at the end. And you probably might figure out what fairy tale I'm talking about. And then we have the pizza monster. So the pretty much the pizza monster looks kind of angry and hungry. I just got away with the drools going on here. Like he's hungry for people. Like we just ate his cousin or something like that. You probably, but I'm not going to say more about this pizza monster than I probably might going to talk about. But I probably, that's all I have for this pizza monster. So I'm just going to move on with the next monster. So the next monster is going to be zombie. So you're going to see that I have created a zombie character. Well, I didn't create it. Theme. I didn't create a female zombie, so I'm creating like just one male zombie, and that's just about it. So you kind of see the zombie looks kind of sinister or something like that, and you kind of see that this zombie like here goes and kind of wrinkles, despite the fact that this thing is likely going to need undead or something like that, and, and you kind of see it has torn as if this thing was buried for a long period of time or something, and then rise for back from the dead or something like that, as if he's out there looking for your brains to eat or something like that. You probably know how, how it is. And then we have like the robotic monsters. So pretty much it's a robotic monster, even though it's just a robot that kind of resembles a monster or something like that. Or maybe it's just an animatronic that you see from this horror video game you play this. Well, you probably know how I'm going, going, but even if you were thinking about a horror video game, you probably know what I'm talking about for all that matter. And then we have the monsters looking minions. So you kind of see this minion looks kind of sinister like this minion figure was trying to do this for his master or something like that or was trying to please his master if you know what I mean but as a matter of fact I do create minions in 
in horror film or something in the Cajun door show, but it doesn't seem it's kind of innocent or something like that. Before this man on hand, it doesn't look innocent or seem innocent, but he seems kind of sinister for all that matter. Based on what he's doing as far as for his master, you probably figure out who the master really was, so I'm just gonna let you figure out on your own. Or you can just make up a story about who this monster looking minion really was, anyhow. And last but not least, we have this demon monster. So you gotta see that this demon monster is all in red and looks like he he can cheat in an Olympic game or something like that. And you kinda see he looks kinda sinisterly evil, like he's up to no good, and you kinda see this demon monster is like after your soul or something like that that you're after. So pretty much I just give this demon monster a really red pitchfork that he can just carry it around with or something like that and you probably point out who this demon demon was and you probably might suggest that maybe this demon monster could have also been a demon king of the monster or something like that. Well that depends on what this demon is and then I got away with the end and then it says the end and also happy Halloween. And how I got away with this? Well yeah even though I got away with this whining pin for whatever it is, I'm not sure what I just draw, but you kind of get the point. So I try to add in like some Halloween colors, like for example, I add red, orange, and of course this darkish brown, brownish color, something like that, because it's black and gray, something like that. And then give it the ending, like the end, and I guess that is just about it for these 31 pictures of monsters I've created. So I'm just going to end this video tape right now. So take it away, Peach alone. I guess that is all I have to say in order to present this. I might have to say thanks for watching, you can look at my website in the description down below, and you can buy my artwork. If you can't seem to afford the artwork, you can purchase the $10 t-shirt before they go away. If you can't afford the t-shirts, you can buy a digital artwork for $1 a download. For these digital artworks you can use it for wallpapers on your computer screen, cell phone, tablet, and your Apple Watch. You can print them and hang them on the wall in your house, and you can use them for locker decorations at your middle slash high school. And also note that I do make videos either individual videos or video series, but if you enter, you can only see the trailer version of the videos. To see the full version, you can go to the subscribe button on the top right, and you would pay for whether 50 cents for 2 days, the $3.50 for 7 days, or the long term $10 per month subscriptions. That's up to you for the choices you make if you want to watch the full version as well as the trailer version. If you can't afford any of these things, you can subscribe to this channel including my other two channels for free, and you can also try out the playlist for at the art studios for free too. So make sure you give this video a like if you like it, and give the artist and filmmaker a high five, so thanks for watching.